like you, O oh God, among the gods? Oh, who is like you, majestic in holiness and awesome in praise, working wonders for your people? And the Lord said to me, tell them not to despise the rain. Because what he's doing in the natural, he's going to do in the spirit. Yeah. And it's a steady rain and strong to bring life to the seeds that are in you and me. Well, this morning as we do the offering, you know, we're going to kick off this conference by giving. Give to God first so that we can receive all that God has for us. Amen? Let's look at Mark 4. Give attention to this. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him be hearing. And let him consider and comprehend. Mm -hmm. And so what the Lord is saying, as yes, he's speaking there, there's another one I thought on good ground. And we know, it, but we're all familiar with that scripture. And so it's time to sow. Right now, the farmers in the natural are preparing their ground. And I come from a farm background. And Res Life has been preparing for this conference for over a month. We've been preparing corporately. We've been preparing individually. And so there's been a lot of prayer. And when uh, there's two things to get the soil ready whether it's natural or spiritual. And that is, the farmer uses a plow and he uses a disc. Now you can set the plow, the, the, the blades, you can set them at different levels. And so at times we really went deep in our prayers for this conference. And then there's more just you know shallow where, it's not so, where there's not so much clutter in the ground. And then they take the disc. And the disc, not all farmers, but they disc their crops. And sometimes they do it two times. But when you disc, you go one way, and then you go this way. And it's, it begins as they do that, the ground, this, the dirt is just ready to receive all that the farmer is going to plant. And so we've been doing that. And so Res Life, this conference, I want you to know is good ground. You're the sower and the money is your seed. And he wants you during this conference to name your seed. We will be taking other offerings up, but he wants you to name the seed. I know there's lots of needs out there. There are a lot of your expectant people. You want things from the Lord. And only that God can do. Man can't do it, but he can use man. And so we want you to name the seed that you have this morning. The farmer usually plants more than one crop. You know, they plant corn and beans and different soybeans and sunflowers and wheat and all kinds of different things. And so there are lots of needs here. So be expected is when they come and take an offering. Don't have it like, oh, another offering? Because you are planting into the kingdom of God. You are planting to advance his kingdom. And as we plan to, in our heart to advance his kingdom, he's going to advance his kingdom in you and I. Amen. And so that's exciting for us. Well, my topic is praying in the glory. And I got that. How are you going to talk on praying in the glory? You know, and then praying and stuff. And it's like, then I changed my attitude. And then I said, <laughs> and then I said, Lord, how are we going to do this? What do you want me to do? It means that we want to host God's presence. And yesterday I talked about cultivating his presence. That's what we've been doing individually, behind the scenes, in our homes. And yesterday all at the seminar. But we want to cultivate it. Because when you have the, the blessing of the Lord, when you have the glory, your house is blessed. If you become a carrier of the glory, you're going to carry this presence. This house is blessed. This house is blessed because the presence rolling in and coming here. And so the thing I, um, I know you're all seasoned women, and we all want to tabernacle with the Lord this morning, but I want to pose a question to you. Will you join me in and crying out desperately to rend the heavens for the glory of God to come down? We want to get out of the anointing. There's a strong anointing. We want to get into the glory. Amen. And so there's seven points I felt the Lord gave me. And you're going to have to work with me. And we're going to see what God's going to do. But he reminded me, when David wanted to bring the ark back into the city of David, there were steps involved. And God gave me seven steps that I believe to bring in the glory for this conference. Like a greater measure than we've experienced before. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, I want you to stand. The first scripture the Lord gave me is Psalms 51.10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, persevering, and steadfast spirit within me. So let's see 
I want us to take a minute to examine our hearts. Let the Holy Spirit examine us. Psalms 26, 2. So just quiet, shut your eyes, and ask the Lord, is there anything that's not quite right in my heart that you want removed so I can experience all that you have? Creating us a clean heart, Lord, and renew a bright spirit. Remove all frustration, all tiredness and weariness, anything that would hinder us. No grudges, no walls, no barriers, nothing. Let's look at Psalms 24, 3 through 10. Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up himself up to falsehood or to what is false, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. This is the generation, description of those who seek him, who inquire of him, for, for him and of necessity require him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Think on that. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up your age-abiding doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Yes, lift them up, you age-abiding doors, that the King of glory may come. Number three, Psalms 133, one through three. A song of ascents of David, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest, that came down upon the collar and skirts of his garment, consecrating his whole body. Glory. It is like the dew of the lofty mountain Hermon, and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing even life forevermore upon the high and upon the low. We're going to personalize this. How good it is when women dwell in unity. The Lord then commands his blessing. So we're going to pray again that God will unify us, spirit, soul, and body. And we come together in one accord like at the upper room where they were at one that God could show up and pour out his spirit. It was a new season and a new era of time. The same thing for here. New things are going to happen to each and every one of us. We're moving into new things, new directions, new guidance, new things to accomplish God's purpose. In Corinthians 3.18. And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured into his very own image, in ever-increasing splendor, and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I want you to decree and declare with me. Right. We decree and declare. We decree and declare. In every session. In every session. You take us from glory take to glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Exodus 29:43. There I will meet with the women. And the tent of meeting shall be sanctified by my glory. The Shekinah, God's visible presence. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We say, yeah. we say, yeah. meet with us. Meet with us. Sanctify, this house. Sanctify this house. Sanctify this house. Sanctify this house. With your glory. And Moses said to the Lord, if your presence does not go with me, do not carry us up from here. Yeah. Amen. For by what shall be known that I and your people have found favor in your sight? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinguished? I and your people from all the other people upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have asked. For you have found favor, loving kindness, mercy in my sight. And I know you personally and by name. And Moses said, I beseech you, show me your glory. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, before you. 
For I'll be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I'll show mercy and loving kindness on whom I will show mercy and loving kindness. We beseech you, Lord. Let's say it. Show us your glory. Ezekiel 43, 5. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we ask you to take us up and bring us into that inner court to behold the glory of the Lord. Fill this house. That guy 2 9 says, The glory of this latter house will be greater than the former. Oh, yeah. The glory of this latter house, that's you and I, will be greater than the former. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.